the basket weave stitch. This just uses knits and purls to create the iconic basket weave pattern. And you can make it in a basket weave like this one with really wide straps and really narrow verticals or flip it around. And you can even do an even more sort of checkerboard basket weave stitch and change it up. So in today's video, we're going to have a pattern for a cowl and you can make it into a trivet if you want to. I'll give you tips on that, but I'm also going to give you tips on when you read patterns, we're going to see how this pattern here, you can make it into a checkerboard as well. So that and more today on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the 12 row repeat in order to make this basket weave. You should already know how to cast on, make knits and purls, and bind off, and maybe even sew ends together to complete a cowl, which is what we'll be doing in this video as well. I'm only going to show you these 12 repeats, and then I'm going to give you tips if you want to finish it off and just do a couple of the repeats and then um, work this first part to make a trivet, something like this. You can see I haven't even woven in the tails, but I want you to see how nice and deep textured this is. This one's actually wor worked in a t-shirt yarn, uh, but you can also work it in a wool and make a trivet or like a hot, big hot pad. We're going to be working this basket weave pattern, but I am going to show you a step up in your learning how to read in our series, learning how to read patterns, and you can make an adjustment and get this more checkerboard type pattern. So let's dive into the pattern right now and get to know it. But first, let's look at our supplies. I'm going to be working with a US 15 needle, and this is a, a 10 millimeter needle. Now I'm gonna work with my lighter colored needles. My stitches kind of crowd up on this really short needle, but I originally made them with my uh, wool in the gang needles, which are really, really dark and they're hard to show up on camera. So I don't want you to think that um, I normally would knit something this wide on such a short needle. Uh, so you can use your straight uh, 14 inch needles or you can use circular ones as well, uh, but we're just working back and forth in a flat panel. The yarn I'm working with, uh, we need two balls of wool in the gang. Uh, this is called Crazy Sexy Wool. You can work it with one ball, but you're going to get more of a neck warmer that's smaller than a cowl, okay? Now this falls in the um, number seven or jumbo weight yarn. It could fall in the, and you see some cl conflicting information online uh, that it falls in the super bulky six weight yarn, but it is made in the UK, so they call it super chunky. It's a roving type of yarn. You don't have to use this one, but I want to tell you if you do use a super bulky six weight yarn, this one, uh, I've got the same stitch pattern done and it's just a little less wide where this one became eight and a half inches. This one's more uh, just under uh, eight inches. And then my length that I work on my row repeats is um, small enough to where we're gonna be working eight repeats of this pattern to make the cowl. But if you work it in this yarn, you would need to do uh, 10 total. So you need like a couple of more of these 12 row repeats in order to get the right length. So with that being said, let's jump into the pattern reading right now. And I'm gonna show you how to switch it up to get to this checkerboard design. Before we begin, a few housekeeping reminders. Please see the description down below for links to the blog and also refresher videos. All of the lessons are down below, so if you do need tutorials that are slower, they're all there, as well as timestamps for this video. Just open that description and click on the timestamp. It will jump to the portion of the video you need, or you can click on the chapter buttons and go to that as well. So uh, we're gonna go over this pattern first. Uh, we've already gone over the supplies. There's very little abbreviations that you need to know because it's really all knits and pearls. The gauge is nine stitches wide by 13 and a half or 13.75 rows in a four inch basket weave pattern. That's just measuring across. You count out in four uh, inches that there's nine stitches wide and then there's 13.75 stitches in the height on that. It's a skill level of easy. The measurements on this cowl are eight and a half inches wide by 28 inches long, and then we stitch the ends together to complete that circle. The basket weave stitch is a multiple of seven plus five. Now this is where we talk about multiples of how many stitches to cast on. That's how you know uh, how wide to get it. Now uh, for this particular pattern, you need to make 
sure that you have a multiple of seven. So your number is divisible by seven. So if I have 14 stitches divided by two, that is an even number seven. Well, it's an odd number seven, but, but it divides evenly. <laughs> okay, so uh, then you're going to add on the extra plus number. So in this case, it's seven plus five. If you want to work this more even uh, checkerboard type of basket weave, that would be a number of six plus three. So uh, this one is going to be uh, 18 stitches plus three, so it's 21. Uh, the standard basket weave that I'm doing in this particular pattern is seven plus five so we're doing a cast on of 19 so that's 14 plus 5 equals 19 so that brings us to our instructions cast on 19 stitches for this particular pattern all right side rows and you can mark them with a stitch marker if you want all right side rows are knit that's very simple so the main pattern that you see emerge happens uh, when you're working your wrong side rows you're going to start off by knitting five and then purling two. And you just repeat those one more time in this particular pattern and then knit the last five stitches. So you're going to repeat those two rows up four times to work rows one through eight, okay? And then that produces this look here, okay? This one here. So you're working your knit row and then when you flip it over and work your knit five purl two, it makes this part right here. Okay, so you get purl stitches on the right side and makes this ridge and then you get knit stitches to make this little bump here and it looks like it's a band that crosses on top of the garter stitch. That's how that turns out. Then you want to make your uh, shorter area here where you have a lot more knits on the right side. So how we do that is we knit that first row that we come to which actually is called row nine and then you're going to purl five which makes stock in it, you're purling five, and then you're knitting two. So it comes out to looking like a garter stitch just here. And then you repeat that, purl five, knit two. So on the wrong side, it looks like this. You purl five here, that's where this bump is, and then you knit two, okay? So that's how you get the right side looking like that. And then you repeat that once more where you're knitting everything one more row, and then row 12 is the same as row 10, purl five, knit two, repeat to the end, and then purl five stitches at the end. So that's how you get that pattern, and you just repeat those rows uh, seven times. So you've got a total of eight repeats, and then you're just binding off and leaving a long tail, and uh, I usually use three times the width plus a, a nice long tail. You can do four times the width just to be safe, but you're gonna use that for sewing it in, and I will show you how to do that. So you're going to seam the cast on and bind off ends together. I wanted to update the video. I added in later on repeat row 11 once more before binding off and that just gives you a little bit of extra space uh, when you are uh, stitching your uh, end of your cowl together. It gives you just a little bit more room and it's easier to sew. Okay, so let's continue on. Okay, so um, there's two th different things you can do on here. If you want to make the trivet, you're going to make the first uh, 12 rows and then repeat it one more time. And then you would just work the um, next eight rows. So just like this pattern here. Then you can come back and make one more knit row just all the way across and then bind off on the wrong side. So you would just work rows one through nine and then instead of working a row 10, you just bind off. And when you bind off on the wrong side, it makes this nice long uh, ridge here. Okay, and so it kind of frames that out. You've got your cast on ridge that happens here and then your bind off will become a ridge down here. Okay, so if you want to work the checkerboard, this is where we're going to change it. So this part of the video, I'll have a timestamp to jump to this area if you want to come back later. This, of course, is a cast on of six plus three, and I've got 21 stitches cast on, and this is how you would change this pattern. It's not much of a change. So you would knit three, purl three. Repeat that across until the last three stitches and you knit, you guessed it, three. Everything's the same, so you just repeat what you did. So if you printed this off, you just, just mark out five and two here and then this five and just write three and three and three. And then when you get down uh, to uh, rows seven and eight, scratch those out. 
<laughs> so, or you can take them and move them down here. So um, you're not gonna work row seven and eight here. So you're actually, you're taking off one more ridge. So how, see how there's three ridges here? Or there's four ridges on this one. This, was, this represents the eight rows. We only want three. So we're only gonna work rows one through six to get this section. And then when we wanna uh, work on the next section, you're just shifting it over and you're going to knit all and then you change row 10 to, um, it's actually going to be a row eight and it's gonna be purl three, knit three, and then purl the last three. And then you're repeating the same as row 10, well, it would be your new row eight, three, uh, two more times. So you're making six rows up here and you're making six rows down here. So there's still a 12 row repeat. You're just taking what was extra rigid as up here and moving it down here. So it's just a slight shift. It might be a little bit more advanced than you wanna do right now in this beginner series, but I just wanted you to have that available if you uh, especially are tuning in later on and you want some more information. Okay, I think you have all that you need. We're going to start by casting on and we're going to work the first 12 rows together. We'll see you in a moment. Let's begin with our cast on. We're going to pull out three times the width. So I'll leave a little tail, pull out one, two, three times the width and place my slip knot. I'm going to wind it around my finger twice. Take the back loop over the front slightly. One more time up and over for a slip knot. And I'm going to place that on my needle, make sure that the tail part is toward me and the ball part is the back. Go ahead and tighten that up. Not too tight because you still need to get that needle through uh, to make your first stitch, but not too loose where it falls off. All right, let's begin. I'm going to grab our yarn, split it with our fingers, pull back like a slingshot. We're going to scoop up at the thumb, down at the finger, down at the thumb, and let it go. And with this very large yarn, I'm going to put a finger space with in between because we want to allow um, some room for our stitches to kind of breathe and grow because if you make them too tight when you cast them on, your knitting is going to pucker together right where we uh, sew it together and it won't be nice and wide uh, because your uh, knitting is going to uh, feel like it's getting too wide if you cast on too tight, okay? So we want to allow um, for that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, cast on some more. I'm putting my finger out here for some spacing. Go up at the finger, down at the thumb, down at the finger, or down at the thumb again and let go. Let me do that again slower. Go up at the thumb, down at the finger, down at the thumb, and let it go. All right. Keep going. You're going to go until you have 19 stitches to cast on. Pause your video and I will see you when you've got that many stitches. See you soon. Before we start row one, I wanna show you this little trick. Now, if I was using the, the proper needles for this, the right size, um, you could do this little trick uh, better than what I've got here. But um, do you see how like if I spread out my stitches uh, more evenly across my needle, that they can actually reach my desired width. Now I can't do that on this one because I kind of run out of room, but you can see when I lay it up here, it actually is matching up to my stitches on my sample. So if I was able to spread this out a little bit more, it would actually reach the right point. So that means that I've cast it on loose enough uh, that it is going to meet gauge. It's going to get the same size as intended. So if you want to make sure you have your stitches cast on, you can spread that amount on your needle and even use a measuring tape and see if it's about eight and a half inches. And then you know your cast on is not going to be too tight. So that's my little tip about tight cast ons. All right, let's jump into row one. Row one, you're going to knit all stitches. So go ahead and knit every stitch. Put your needle in, yarn over, pull through, and let the old fall off. Can keep going. So if you need to put a stitch marker in those stitches, do it right after you've begun. Grab your stitch marker and place it here, and that will show you that this is your right side row. All right, continue working. Uh, pause your video. I'll meet you for row two. See you soon. Row two, we're going to knit five. So knit one, two, three, four, and five. 
yarn to the front, purl two, one, two. Okay, we'll take that next part slower. We're going to repeat that once more, knit five, one, two, three, four, and five. You should have seven stitches left. We're going to put our yarn forward, purl two, put the yarn in the front of that needle, or in front of that stitch with your needle, yarn over, push that through to make your purl stitch. Let it come off, go into the next stitch, front of that stitch, yarn over, push through to make your purl stitch, let it fall off, yarn to the back, or else you're gonna get an accidental stitch increase you're going to knit the remaining stitches, which is five. One, two, three, four, and five. Row three, you've got your right side again, and you can see your uh, basket weave start to emerge. You're going to repeat rows one and two three more times so you have a total repeats of the ridges four times you'll see four of these ridges pronounced so you can uh, continue working that and jump to the part of the pattern where we work on row nine and ten uh, where i'm going to spell these out for you so you can go to each row individually so row three you're going to knit all stitches go ahead and do that pause your video and we'll work row four See you in a moment. Row four, go ahead and knit five. One, two, three, four, and five. Yarn forward, purl one, purl two, And repeat. Yarn to the back, knit five, one, two, three, four, five. Yarn forward, purl two, one, two. Yarn to the back, knit to the end. Pause your video, meet you back up for the next row. Row five, you can really see that basket weave start to emerge, and now you can tell that you just had that purl row and you need a knit row. So row five, we're going to knit across. Knit all stitches. Pause your video, I'll meet you back for row six. See you soon. Row six, you're going to knit five. One, two, three, four, and five, purl. Don't forget to yarn forward first and then yarn to the back again. Knit five, one, two, three, four, and five. Yarn forward, purl. Again, it's purl two. I may not have said that in the last one, but it is still purl two and then yarn to the back. You're going to knit to the end. Pause your video, I'll meet you for row seven. See you soon. It's really looking good. You've got three ridges starting to emerge. Continue on with the next row seven where you knit across. Go ahead and do that. Knit all stitches, pause your video. I'll meet you back up for row eight. See you soon. 
Row eight is just like before where it makes the ridges on the other side. If you are further along in the project and you're repeating these, just know that if you um, only see one, two, three ridges, you do need a row eight. Don't jump on to the next uh, pattern, okay? So go ahead and work your first five stitches. Knit one, two, three, four, and five. Remember, I'm going fast. It's okay. You can push pause or um, you can hit the slow button. There's something called the playback speed and you can just change how fast that goes. All right, so knit the next five. Three, four, and five. And then purl two. And then knit the last five. Okay, pause your video. I'll meet you back up for the next section and we'll get the pattern really going. See you in a moment. All right, we're at the right side again. We're going to work row nine and you're knitting across. Go ahead and do that again. Pause your video and meet me back up for row 10 where things really start changing. See you soon. All right, row 10, and we're going to shift things up a bit. They're going to move over to where uh, we're going to have uh, five purl stitches and then two knit stitches. So you're just flip-flopping what you've been doing. So you're going to go into the front of that stitch and purl one, two, three, four, Five, and then yarn to the back and we're going to knit two, yarn to the front again and we're going to purl five, one, two, three, four, five, again pause your video if you need to. Yarn to the back, knit two, and you should have five remaining stitches. Yarn forward and purl to the end. Pause your video, meet me back up when you're ready for row 11. See you soon. You can start to see that stock and net coming through and your two little purl blips <laughs> every five stitches. We're going to uh, work this row 11 with knitting all stitches. Go ahead and do that, pause your video, and meet me back up for row 12. See you soon. Okay, row uh, 12 is the same as row 10. You're going to purl the first five stitches. So purl one, two, three, four, and five, yarn to the back, knit two, one, two, purl to the front, or yarn to the front and purl five stitches, one, two, three, four, Five. Should have seven stitches left. Purl the next two and knit. I'm sorry, knit the next two. I'm sorry, I just did it but didn't say it right. Knit the, those two and then purl the remaining five stitches. All right, pause your video. I'll meet you back up for the next part. See you soon. All right, so you should have rows one through 12 completed. You're going to repeat that seven more times until you get the length to make your cowl. After you've repeated your seven extra repeats, then go ahead and work one more knit row before binding off. It'll give you a little bit extra space uh, to sew in uh, right before your bind off. 
and then you will bind off. So you should already know how to bind off or cast off. You're just um, knitting those two stitches and lifting the first one over and then knitting the next stitch, lifting the first one over the second, just as we've done before in all these other tutorials. So work all the way across and when uh, you meet me back up, you are going to be uh, pulling through that last stitch and we will sew this in together. Now uh, I do want to point out that this uh, you can see it's kind of squishing past my needle. You can absolutely work it on this uh, but when you're doing your bind off make sure that you're not um, binding off too tightly especially if you're working on a shortened needle. Uh, the longer ones obviously are going to be able to spread out but I just wanted you to see what that looks like. If you do want to work the trivet you're just going to work this repeat one more time and then work rows one through nine and then bind off on the wrong side. Okay, so that's all you need to know. Go ahead and do that. I'll join you for sewing in your tails uh, and connecting your cowl. So we're just gonna pull that long tail out. And then this tail is going to be used to sew together your two ends. So you're going to make, uh, this is your right side. So you're gonna put the uh, wrong sides together. And then you're gonna be sewing in uh, with this long tail. Uh, this little one right here, uh, go ahead and weave that tail in first. And uh, any other tails that you may have had from uh, adding in another ball of yarn. I had to actually uh, add in a ball of yarn about right here towards the end. And then uh, pause your video. We'll meet back up and I'll show you how to sew this together. See you in a moment. Okay, so I've got my knitting with my yarn on this side over here. And I've just kind of folded it together where uh, the cast on the end is next to my bind off end. Go ahead and thread your needle. This is your wide-eyed tapestry needle you should have in your Notions stash. If you don't, you need to get one. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to um, be pulling all of this through as we go. Uh, look at the bind-off side, or no, I'm sorry. Look at the cast-on edge, and when you pull back this yarn here, where these loops are, you're going to see little V stitches, okay? So um, the first one is a little harder to see. You might want to go to the second column where you see the first V stitch and you can see one, two. So follow that over until you see the left and the right uh, little first part of that very first V stitch. Go behind that uh, stitch all the way from the outside toward the end and pull through all your yarn. So uh, now I'm going to um, pull that up it's nice and snug and I'm going to go down to the um, bind off edge and I'm going through uh, this first stitch here. So you can go to the second column to see the first set of V's and you see this V stitch here. Okay, go to the outside column and do the same thing that you did up here. Just go from the uh, outside of it underneath those two stitches and pull through. Okay, and then now we're going to go uh, on top. We're not going underneath at all. We're just um, going to be putting our needle down through the next stitch. So next to where we went before, you can pull your yarn back to see it and go underneath that next V on the left and right uh, parts of that V there and go through, pull all your yarn and Basically what it does is it makes a stitch on top. We've made this stitch and this stitch. It's a little bit harder to see, um, but once you get going in yours, you'll be able to see it. So now you're going to come down to this column down underneath it and catch underneath the legs of the right and left of that V stitch there. So you're just matching up column for column of these um, rows of knit stitches. You pull it all the way through. And you can see another little stitch is appearing. So just keep going through each one of these stitches and pulling all of your slack. And then coming down to the next one. And going.
going through again. And that is what your seam should start to look like. And you can pull on your stitches tighter to make sure that you've um, got uh, you've got a nice good connection. If you're not sure, if you think you've kind of uh, zagged it over a little bit, um, you can also kind of fudge it and go a half stitch over and uh, get the columns uh, lined up uh, nice. These look like they're actually uh, lined up right, uh, but you can uh, pull on them and undo. Just be real careful and maybe take your needle out and one by one pull those out to get it lined up. So uh, you're just gonna continue going all the way across over here and once you get to the end, weave in your tail and you are done. And this is what my seam looks like after I've uh, woven in my tails. I hope you enjoyed making your cowl. Be sure and tag me on Instagram when you get yours finished or when you just cast on. I would love to see yours. Comment down below and tell me what your Instagram handle is. All right, we'll see you soon. I wanna see your cowls and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.